I'm going to show you the secret how to create these titles that Iman Gaji also uses in a lot of videos. In his last video, he talks about the books that he likes. I have some of these books actually myself laying around in the bookcase. One of them is Atomic Habits. So that's also the book that we're going to use today. And like always, we're going to do this in three easy steps. One, we're going to create the 3D book. Let's just start with the most exciting part. Then two, we're going to do some text animation. And the third one, and that's the secret technique about this, is a technique that he uses all the time, basically giving more depth to a otherwise static and boring animation. So let's jump into it. I have my After Effects open. We're gonna create a new composition, 4K 25 FPS. Rename our comp to book title. And first we're gonna make a 3D book. So what we do is we import a book cover. In this case, Atomic Habits. Again, one of my favorite books. So I'm gonna open this. I'm gonna put this in our composition. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scale it a bit, 80%, and I'm gonna pre-compose this. So we go to layer, pre-compose. We're gonna call this book front, move all attributes. Okay, so now we have a book front. And why we did this is because we want to replace this cover later on. Let's say we have another cover. Uh, it's really easy to replace it. You just go into the book front and you replace the image, make sure it's the same size. So we can go back now. We can make it 3D because we're going to work with 3D layers now. We're then going to use the rectangle tool. So basically I'm going to create shapes to make sure that this is going to become a book. First, the bottom layer. I'm gonna just select it like this. I'm gonna remove the stroke. I'm gonna make sure the fill is gonna be a bit like light gray, okay? Then I'm gonna zoom in. I'm gonna turn this into a 3D layer. I'm gonna press R for rotation and I'm gonna rotate this. Now actually, before we rotate this, we need to make sure that we rotate on the right axis and that the anchor point is on the right setting. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this anchor point because if we're gonna rotate it now, you'll see it rotates on this axis. We don't want that. So we're gonna move it with the pen behind tool, which is this tool. The short key is Y. And we can just move this. And when you hold down command or control on Windows, you can snap it to the bottom. So if we rotate this now, it should rotate on the right axis. We're gonna set this on 90 degrees. And when we turn on our book again, it should be invisible. That's correct because it's on the bottom of the book. And we're gonna do the same, but then on all the other sides. The top one is easy. We can just duplicate the shape layer and go to P for position. And, or we can actually just take the normal selection tool. And then you can just move it on the top axis. We're gonna move it to the top. Make sure that it's aligned correctly. I'm gonna change my resolution to full and probably a bit like this. Now, for these sides, it's important that it's the same depth. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, again, duplicate this. We're gonna rotate it, this time across the Y axis. Gonna put it on plus 90 uh, degrees. We're gonna move this to the side. Again, I'm gonna zoom in a bit. And we're gonna move this down, 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 something like that. Now we need to make sure that the length is the right length. So <laughs> what we're gonna do is we can uh, open this layer and then we go to into the contents the rectangle and then we go into size and then we move the size of the layer. Now again, this takes some manual work because we need to move it a bit. Again, change the axis, make sure that it's aligned correctly. Maybe I'm gonna decrease the size a little bit, something like that. And now for the last one, which is gonna be really easy, we're gonna duplicate this layer again, change the Z axis to the right, like that. Zoom in all the way and make sure that it's aligned with the book. And since you can't see the back of the book, we don't have to create the back. We just need the side so we can move it a bit. So this is all done. What we're gonna do is we're gonna select all the layers, make sure that it's all nice and clear for us. And what we're now gonna do is we're gonna parent them and link them to the book front. So we're gonna move this to the book front. Now, what happens if I rotate this? So I'll show you. If I rotate this to the side, for example, the Y rotation and the Z rotation or the X rotation, you'll see that it looks like it's 3D. And now we can start animating it, which is the most exciting part. I always love the animation process. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, scale it down. It's way too big now, probably something like this. I'm gonna rotate it maybe a little bit on the Z axis too, and a little bit on the X rotation. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna go, for example, one second in the animation, we're gonna keyframe everything. And now we're gonna go 
back to the first frame and we're gonna straighten it. Now we'll hit P for position, click the time frame, uh, click the keyframe, not the time frame. Press U to see all the keyframes. We're gonna move this out and we're gonna move this down like this and we're gonna select all the keyframes. Keyframe assistant, easy in. We're gonna select them all. We're gonna go to the graph editor and then we're gonna create a curve, something like this. So it will go really smooth. I'm gonna play this and that already looks really good. Actually, what we could do is change, for example, the, the Y rotation out a bit. So it keeps moving, something like that. I think that looks amazing. I think it looks so cool. It's such a cool effect and so easy to do too. And then we're gonna press the position again. And of course, make sure that it goes back down again. Again, we can also create some adjustments to the rotations here. So there's at least some keyframes there. Make sure that your keyframes from the start are still there so it won't keep rotating we're just gonna play this i don't really like how these animations go and that's because these also need some ease easing can even select it go to the graph editor i can just only change this layer actually love it and we can also turn on motion blur to make it even a bit more smoother you don't have to actually a lot of effects that Iman uses are not using motion blur because it's just a bit more sharp, a bit more tacky, I would say. It's a stylistic choice. I like motion blur, so I'm gonna keep it. I'm really happy with the result and we're gonna go to the next step because we're gonna animate the text. First things first, we're gonna enable the transparency, toggle transparency, so we see the background. And we're gonna make the lower third. This is a really old term and it's actually being used in the TV world back in the days. And why it's a lower third? Because it's on the lower third of the screen or on your video, on your YouTube video. Here he includes the number and also the text or the title of the book and the author. So we're gonna create the background first, which we're gonna do by changing the fill to a dark color like this. We're actually not gonna use a rectangle, but just a pen tool. And we do this because it has quite a unique shape. I changed the Z rotation a bit so you can see the shape that we're gonna follow. We're gonna do the same shape as the book side. So basically, you can just press here. We're gonna hold shift. So this line is gonna be straight. Then we're gonna just eyeball it a bit, basically like making sure that it's a bit like the same angle of attack like this. Then I'm gonna hold shift again, make a straight line and something like that. I'm really happy with this. Now we're gonna also add a bottom section. Again, we're just gonna press here with the pen tool to add a point. I'm gonna add another point here and another point. What we can do is we can select this point too by holding shift and then we can just move this all together. Uh, so we make sure this line stays straight. Something like this, perfect. Really happy with this. Now the text is quite easy. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create the circle with the ellipse tool, just make sure nothing is selected. And then the fill can be on none and the stroke can be on white, white, 20. We're gonna hold shift. We're gonna move this by pressing V and I'm gonna make it a bit more thin, something like 10. Then for the number, I'm gonna make this number, number 15. Number 15. I'm gonna move this. I'm gonna make it a bit more small, something like this. And then the text here, I select a square like this and we can align it on the left, make it way less big, something like 70 in terms of size, and then atomic habits. And then I like to have it medium, smaller, something like this. It's by James Clear, of course. Now a couple of things, the font is a bit more stretched. What we could do is actually stretch it by using the stretch tool. And also the bottom text is a different color. Uh, the fill is just basically a bit lighter or a darker. We're gonna move this down and I think the font size is actually still a bit too big. It can still be some more line height, something like that. And I'm quite happy with this. So we're gonna go to the next step. So in this step, I'm gonna create the scribble effect, but not only that, I'm also gonna stylize it a bit more. So first of all, what I saw is that this text is actually in 3D and that's quite easy. What we can do is make it 3D we can even link it to each other. For example, we can link everything to the 15 and then we can press R for the rotation and we're gonna 
rotate it a bit, something like that. So there's a bit more depth to it. Now for the scribble effect, there's multiple ways to do this. I'm just gonna show you the way that I think is the most easiest. So what you can do is just put a turbulent displace on one of the layers that you want. For example, the text, you're gonna change the displacement to cross displacement, then the size to really low, something like two, and we already get the effect a bit. And then you can just play with the amount. The amount you can just put in how much you want. In my case, I think 20 would be nice. And then you can play with the evolution. So, or you can keyframe this or even easier, hold Alt, press the stopwatch icon. We can put in time times thousand. And if we now play it, as you can see, there's movement in our text. Now we can just copy and paste this to every layer that we want. What we can now do is parent the 15 to the black shape of the uh, lower third. Press P, position, go back to the first frame and we're gonna move it in. We're gonna right click this, easy ease, play. We can even make it a bit more smoother like that. And of course, animate it out, copy and paste. Go to our curve editor, make it a bit more smooth. And it's really that simple. Now, there's still a lot to cover on Eman's channel. But if you saw some different creators, do let me know in the comments down below. Because I would love to dive deep in some other creators and how they do their effects. But it can also be editing or design or in this case animation. Don't forget to subscribe to see the next video and then I'll see you next time.